If you have been watching my channel for a while, you may remember over a year ago, I had my friend Dan on and we were talking about all things like finance related. So if you're in college or graduate school and you wanna understand like negotiating offers, internship offers, investing even, like I would highly recommend going to check out that video. But I got a lot of people reaching out saying how they found that video very useful and how they thought Dan had a lot of really great insight. And I also get a lot of emails about research related positions and how to get research roles after getting your PhD. And while I've interned on research teams in the past, all of my full-time positions have been non-research roles. So I thought, who better to have back on my channel than Dan, who is a researcher at Google Brain. And when we sat down to talk, we talked for like an hour and a half. And I thought all of the insights that Dan provided and all of the answers he gave were so interesting and so insightful that I didn't really want to cut a lot of it out. And instead of posting the entire hour and a half video, I decided to break it into segments. So I'll be posting them at separate times. And I apologize that the format that I recorded this video in is not exactly how I wanted it to be recorded in with Zoom, but all of the information is still there and I still wanted to share our entire conversation with you. So I hope you stick around and you watch all the videos in this series. And I will put at the beginning of all of these videos a list of what we talk about in the video so you can see whether it's of interest to you. And if you have questions for either me or Dan, please leave them in the comment section below. If they are for Dan, I'll make sure that he sees them. And I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. to ask you just out of like a list of things how important on a scale of zero being not important and five being extremely important extremely important um, is each of the following things in getting a full-time job in some sort of research role in industry so how important is your thesis topic in getting a research position in industry because a lot of graduate students don't work on anything that is practical. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a really tough question. So I, I, I think um, your thesis topic is one of these things that is very close to black and white, right? Either your thesis topic is going to ben benefit you tremendously, or it's going to benefit you not, uh, not at all, basically, right? And but both, uh, the PhD itself is still useful, but the topic, the specific topic that you chose, right? So. Um, there was a period of time uh, where, uh, for example, machine learning folks were getting paid tremendous amounts of money uh, uh, because there were not enough people graduating right with MO uh, thesis related thesis topics, especially you know practical MO related thesis topics. Um, so and that that would be so MO would be one example where your thesis topic actually matters a lot, right? Now, if your thesis topic doesn't really matter. That doesn't mean it was wasted, right? It's it's still beneficial because you got the experience, right, of working on a new problem and solving that uh, in domain, right? But the topic alone is probably not going to benefit you, right? So, I, I so so I guess in my case, it was kind of unusual in the sense that uh, I didn't pivot completely away from my uh, thesis topic. So my topic had to deal with hardware software co design for um, I guess you can call it a precursor to uh, modern deep learning, which would be uh, graph analytics. And um, obviously, I'm doing nothing related to graph analytics, but uh, the hardware software co-design aspect, especially like how um, I'm able to uh, characterize the performance for a particular piece of software on the, on hardware, actually has come in you know tremendously uh, uh, helpful, right, in terms of my career, right. But in terms of um, 
the topic, that my thesis topic, you know, attracting recruiters, uh, the answer is like not at all, right? So people, the recruiters don't care about parallel graph analytics. I do think your field or like, what your broader field is could be very important. I mean, I was doing stuff that was a little bit in computer vision and then that was how I like I had any sort of domain knowledge to even interview for some of the positions. But yeah, the I, I agree. I don't think the actual like thesis topic in most cases is that important. It's either it's not important or it's extremely important. Yeah. How important is the school that you go to or like the prestige of the department, school or program? Yeah, so that's that's another like really hard one to answer. Yeah, so um, so basically, there's the politically correct answer, and there's the non politically correct answer, right? So the politically correct answer is that your is that the rankings don't really matter, and it's up to you to you know uh, get the best benefit, right, from from a particular school. All schools can teach you the same things, and you can end up at the same destination no matter what school you go to, right? The non-politically correct answer is that uh, schools are highly ranked for a reason, right? So uh, whether that's you know the prestige of the name brand. Uh, now, of course, prestige is basically a lagging indicator for how good a school is. Um, uh, your, uh, but also, I think the thing that is most important, uh, based on my own, my own experience, is that um, it actually does matter, like how um talented and driven your classmates are around you right so uh you could go and be a big fish in a small pond and you can still have a really successful career but in terms of your network uh you will probably have a weaker network than if you were to have gone to you know a higher ranked school right so the higher ranked schools uh, are more in demand and they have lower acceptance rates which means that the people entering tend to have done better in uh, undergrad, right? And they tend to will have done, you know, uh, ha have more diverse uh, sets of experiences, right? So um, I think um, that part is really beneficial, right? Especially your network, right? Uh, also, the uh, PhD advisor that you go work for it tends to matter a lot, uh, not just in terms of your thesis topic, which we've established uh, uh, most of the time doesn't really matter. But in terms of like the connections that this PhD advisor has to industry and other schools, right? So, um, for example, and I, I really don't like to admit this, but right, my PhD advisor, Derek Chu, did help me find you know a good opportunity with my first job, right? And so you know that that part you know I'm I'm very grateful for. But like if I had like a different PhD advisor, my career would li likely have looked very different because they would have had you know very different connections, right? Um, uh, whether it's good or bad, it's very hard to say, right? But um, it is true that the fact of the matter is that PhD advisors do tend to help their students find, you know, their first job, right? And they will, you know, connect, you know, you to, you know, different uh, people in different companies, depending on their own experience. And so, uh, and, uh, but of course, it's also the case that there sometimes are uh, excellent PhD advisors at lower ranked universities, right? So uh, it's always like a, a, a trade-off, right? So um, I think that uh, the best way to deal with it is just to apply to all the schools, uh, as many schools as you can, right? And, uh, and then you can make your decision, you know, based off the, uh, you know, what you get in, right? I have, I, I actually have the same experience. Like I found that the network that my advisor had and even just like, the other students around me and the kinds of like partnerships that his lab had with industry was very helpful. So for my first job, there was somebody on the team that I was joining who was actually like co-advised by my advisor. And so I think that helped my application stand out in the process for me getting my first job. But even in terms of like getting internships, other jobs while you're in industry, like advisors frequently do send out like they do have alumni lists and they do send out like job postings and if you are recruiting like for your team you'll probably first reach out to like your advisor and say like hey i have this position on my team it's very related to like some of the research that you do in your lab could you send out this job posting to people in your lab so i do think your advisor plays a bigger role in your future than a lot of people maybe initially think 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think your advisor really helps you with that first step, and uh, and and absolutely with internships as well. Like I remember when uh, my advisor got his he he did his his uh, sabbatical at uh, Microsoft Research, and when he started, somehow he got his entire lab, including me, uh, positions uh, in either MSR or regular Microsoft, and we actually held research uh, group meetings, weekly research group meetings uh, in person, right? <laughs> like like in, in Microsoft, right? Like like I probably would not have been able to get that position without without him you know, doing his sabbatical at Microsoft. Where do you draw the line between like, what is research for your PhD and what is research for Microsoft then? Uh, I think research for your PhD is if uh, the research ends up as part of your PhD thesis, right? So in uh, my specific case, uh, uh, my uh, research at Microsoft uh, did not count towards my PhD thesis. Oh, really? Was it at all related or was did it not count because it was not related? Yeah, I guess, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't too related. You, okay. you could probably have made, made it sort of related, but uh, it wasn't really, um, that really wasn't uh, something we were thinking about at the time. And um, and also like, I, I never ended up submitting the paper that I was supposed to be working on. So, so that, I mean, that obviously p- plays a role in that too. Okay, and speaking of internships, I think you've touched on this, but internships in your opinion, are really important, right? For getting your full-time job out of getting your PhD, or getting a full-time job after graduate school? Or do you think that it is, I mean, I'm, I know it's possible to get a full-time job without doing internships, but in your opinion, on a scale of zero to five, like how important is doing internships? Yeah, I would say probably like a four, right? Like it's, it's extremely important. It's not gonna, like not doing internships is not gonna disqualify you from, you know, um, uh, top jobs, but uh, it definitely helps tremendously, right? Um, I think um, you should at least do, you know, two or three internships during your PhD. So um, I think also that uh, doing internships is um, uh, during your PhD is probably one of the best times to figure out what kind of company you want to go work for, uh, if if a company at all, or maybe going to you know academia, um, because. Um, uh, an internship only lasts for a few months, right? And you can do an internship with a different team or a different company, right? Uh, every single year. And so um, once you start working full time, it becomes kind of harder and harder to change jobs, right? Uh, at some point, you know, uh, uh, you know, a recruiter is going to uh, see it as a red flag if you only stay at a company for like a year before hopping somewhere else, right? So uh, two two or three times is okay. Uh, probably like four or five times is probably where recruiters will start, you know, asking about this, right? And so, uh, but during an internship, this is completely fine. And in, in fact, it's uh, encouraged. Oh, boy.